So would you agree with me that we live in a time full of great choices? And some people say, you can have that amazing career, but you can't have time for friends and family. You can have your man rich and ugly, <laughs> or poor and handsome. You can run that amazing business, but you're never going to sleep. So if you're living in this life of choices, I would like to introduce you to an alternative, which is a life of combination. My name is Martin Sharp. I'm a business consultant, award-winning speaker and mentor, and best-selling author. And what do I mean by life of combinations? I mean there's just one thing you've got to change. You've got to drop your butt. <laughs> no, don't worry. I am not going to be dancing. There will be, I will not be getting on the floor, and I will certainly not be twerking. <laughs> what I mean is, you need to replace the butt with one thing, and that is you replace it with an hand. Because once you've replaced it with an and, you can have some amazing combinations. For example, you get fish and chips, mac and cheese, bread and butter. You might even be able to work out how you can have your cake and eat it. Just in case you're thinking I'm food obsessed, um, just consider this. Where would Batman be without Robin? Holmes without Watson? Penn without Teller? And in fact, some people consider that it's actually the combination and contrast of Penn's highly talkative nature and Teller's absolute silence when they're performing that make them such a great entertaining duo. And there's so many other great contrasts out there that the Anne provides us with. For example, we get uh, uh, good and evil, day and night, light and dark. And what, how does that benefit us? This benefits us because you can't have one without the other. It takes two to appreciate both. Now, we've already heard today some amazing women speakers, and there are a couple of men. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to explore is actually how can you bring out the and in your own life? Maybe we can do this by an example. Would that work? Yes, I know? Yeah. yeah? Okay. So let's consider ourselves artists. We're all painters today. And what does a painter do? A painter takes a canvas and some paints and some brushes and a great idea. And he combines all these things together. He works at this, really works at this, to try and draw the art out of it, to make his work come alive. And he does this because he's got a number of constraints. He's constrained by the materials he's got. And some people believe that it's the constraints that actually make us creative. And it's the and that gives us those constraints. Without the and, you wouldn't have them. Now, I believe, I truly believe, that we are all artists here because we all create art in our own way. If you're a baker, then your cakes are your creation. If you're a systems engineer, then your systems are your creation. If you're an entrepreneur or a business owner, then your business is your creation. And what you've done is you've combined a number of elements that you've had, a number of opportunities. you fused them together and you've created something powerful, something new, something that wasn't there before. And that, for me, is the power of the end. Now, for some people, they kind of live in this, this world of black and white, right and wrong, light and dark. But have you ever found in life things are never quite that simple? There's no such thing, really, as a black and white life. Everything seems to be those shades of grey. <laughs> One person's right is another person's wrong, yes or no? And even things like, consider the statement, the black of night. Is night really black? Or is it actually black and grey with blue hues? Is it peppered with a billion stars shining brightly? Do the lights from the earth reflect off the clouds above? So the reality is, even night itself is a multitude of colours. So why would we want to restrict our lives to just black and white? Surely, we want to be living our lives in a multitude of colours, grasping the opportunities that are available to us, fusing, making something bigger, making something better, making something new. I would argue that actually not one of you could be sat here if it wasn't for the power of the and. Because scientists tell us that each of us started from two strands of DNA. 
that amalgamated together, combined in your first cell, which then multiplied and multiplied and multiplied, and upon and, time upon time, to create the body that you're sat in today. today. They're even telling us today that actually, even before we get life, the basis for our life is water. Well, certainly on this planet that we know of. Now, what is water? Water is the combination of hydrogen and oxygen fused together. If you don't have that combination, then all you have is air. Now, we need air to live and breathe, right? But it's not where life came from. So we spent a couple of minutes thinking about this and in our own lives and how it works for us. Let's have a think about it from an industry point of view. Because um, would you agree with me that businesses exist to solve a problem or fill a need? Yes or no? Absolutely. And how do they do this? So I believe they do this through innovation. And as a species, we've been innovating for millennia. I mean, if we go far enough back, far enough back, man, oh, sorry. That's an incorrect statement. We don't know whether it was a man. But humankind found fire. And from that, we used it for heating, lighting, for cooking. We then kind of invented the wheel and we started using that technology. We went through the Bronze Age and the Iron Age. We, we developed steels, we developed alloys to the point where today we use these materials all the time. In fact, I bet you use all these materials today. So raise your ha hand if you came to this venue in some form of transportation. A car, a bus, a bike maybe? Yeah, it's pretty much ubiquitous. And simply because, if we didn't, some of us would have had quite a long walk. And that might have taken us a little bit more time. So that kind of solves the problem for us. And the reason why this works is because we've used the power of the and. We have all these building blocks of technology, all these little innovations are created and are combined at different periods by different people to make something bigger something better, something new. And again, this is the power of the and. Let's think of a more modern example. So um, let's have a think. Actually, I've got a great one, one that's actually created social change around the globe. I think you're gonna like it. But let's take it back. Let's go back to the 1970s. I'm not gonna ask you if you were around, I'm not that impolite. But the 1970s, what an amazing decade. You know, we were putting men on the moon, but for this technology, we're going to bring it a bit closer to the Earth, if that's okay. And anyone remember those old analog mobile phones? You know, the ones that were the size of car, thank you very much. <laughs> the ones that were the size of car batteries. The signal would fade in and out. You won't be able to hear the other person. And half the time, you actually got somebody else's phone call that came through because they weren't that secure. I wonder if some people used to get yours. Anyway, that was until Motorola in the 1970s created the, the digital phone cell, which allowed for digital mobile phones to be created. This was the first time you could have a clear, crisp, secure communication with somebody else. Also in the 1970s, there was a, a little known group called the Digital Audio Broadcasting Group who set up their Eureka project with the whole aim of that project to be able to encode digital audio. Now, what's that mean for us today? Well, we use this nearly every time. It's used in... Uh, digital televisions, DAB radios, if you listen to Spotify, even if you guys listen to this TED talk later on, you'll be using that building block of technology. Also in the 1970s, there was this great company, uh, certainly in photography, called Kodak. And Kodak developed the digital camera. This was the first time you could now take a crystal clear image, not, um, not transferring it to film using chemicals, but transferring it to a chip and changing it to a digital file just ones and zeros that can be transmitted anywhere around the world. So all these great building blocks of technology were created in the 1970s, but it wasn't until 30 years later when another great technology company combined all these together with a really easy way of being able to interface with it and gave the world the iPhone in 2007 that things really started to change. So, actually, let's, let's do an experiment. So raise your hand, and actually, raise your smartphone in the air if you've got your smartphone with you. Raise your smartphone in the air, come on. Let's see. Okay, don't be shy. <laughs> Excellent. You can see I left mine on my desk. <laughs> Excellent. So pretty much ubiquitous in this room, everyone has a smartphone. And this is a real change over the last 10 years that everyone's been able to get them. 
But the biggest change is actually what you can do with these devices now. Because you can use them for communication, you can use them for commerce, you can use them for education, you can use them for entertainment. Which means you've now got the power of a device in your hand that was only dreamed of in the 1970s. Anybody watch Star Trek back then? Anyone? Anyone? Can you remember this was the technology they were talking about as well? Now, one of the biggest social changes is what Statistica tells us. So in 2019, 50% of all mobile traffic around the world, all web traffic from around the world, went to a mobile device. And that's in every country. And this was unheard of five years ago, which means that people are now consuming more information and interacting more on the go than they ever were before. Not only that, but also, if you look at uh, regions such as South America, Asia, and Africa, that number goes up to 60%, which means that this ability to be able to communicate and have commerce, and have education and entertainment is now within the grasp of everybody who wants it, wherever you are around the world. Now, that, for me, is massive social change. And that is the power of the end. Now, you might be wondering, how can you use the power of the end daily in your life? So I've got three tips for you, what you can use to take the way. The first one is really simple, actually. <laughs> You'll find it incredibly powerful because it will get you to change your mind. And that is, whenever you find yourself saying the word but, I want you to instantly change it to and, there and then. And what you'll find is you'll start thinking in a different way because you'll start to find these combinations and join these. My second tip for you is when you're given those choices, you know, you can have this or that, maybe being in a restaurant, you can have steak or fish. And you've got to ask those power questions. How can I do both these things? What would it take to make this combination work? Perhaps I need to have surf and turf. I don't know. But at least you're having the opportunity to think about it. You'll discover new options and new ways to make it work. And my third tip for you is for those times when you get given almost the suicidal kind of choice, you know, the rock and the hard place. You the best, we choose the best of two evils, please. And on those occasions, you need to take out the third option. Now, what is the third option, you might be thinking? Now, the third option comes because most people will present you with an either-or choice, which is safe. Safe for them, possibly safe for you. But that's because they know that that's what they believe is going to work for you. But it's not all the options that are out there. And actually, if you look harder and you start to think in a different way, then that difference can make a great difference in your life. Have you heard the saying, if you've always do what you've always done, you'll always get what you've always got? So you have to think differently to make something else happen, don't you? And that might be a bit more crazy, a bit more creative, a bit more unusual. But that crazy, creative, unorthodox way of thinking can actually have an amazing effect and create something amazing in the world. And all you have to do to bring this on board is four things. Make sure it's plausible. Make sure you've got enough time to be able to do it. Make sure you can muster the resources to make it happen and pull together the right skills and knowledgeable people to make it a success. So are you gonna limit yourself and restrict yourself to a life of choice? I mean, just looking at either or. Are you going to drop your butt and replace it with the ant? In fact, I'd like to get you guys to say this one after me. So stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Repeat after me. Drop the butt, replace it with the ant. 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 Thank you very much. <laughs>